This made me sad this morning. Grammy award-winning singer Meatloaf has died. According to his official Facebook page, he passed away with his wife, Deborah at his side. No cause of death has been announced. His career spanned six decades. He sold more than 100 million albums and starred in more than 65 movies. CNN's Paul Verkamen looks back on his life and legacy. Meatloaf performs sweet suburban melodies with dramatic flair, unleashing the lyrics of composer Jim Steinman. I go out on a stage as if it's the last thing I'll ever do. I, I will, and that's what I've always said. If I'm going, if I'm going out, I'm going out on a stage. Well, the Meatloaf. Where did that name come from? The real story is that there is no story. The real story is that kids. Uh, I was about eight years old. I've been called Meatloaf since I was about eight. Meatloaf, or Meat for short, was born Michael Leaday in Dallas, Texas. But even Texas was not big enough to corral his talents. Meatloaf would go on to sell more than 80 million records worldwide, one of the top-selling musicians ever. His three Battle of Hell albums became staples in college dorms. The first one selling 43 million copies. A bad at hell one I was not ready for. I, I, I had a nervous breakdown. I went to uh, uh, psychologists and psychiatrists for two years, uh, and, I, and I went with them to deal with the word star. Meat got a hold of his demons. He starred on stage and screen, known for the Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> wow. And Bob Paulson in Fight Club. First rule is, I'm not supposed to talk about it. And the second rule is, I'm not supposed to talk about it. And the third rule Bob, is, Bob, I'm a member. Off screen, he married twice, became a father to two daughters. And Meatloaf entered reality TV, Donald Trump's celebrity apprentice. In an infamous episode, he blistered Gary Busey. You look in my eyes, I am the last person in the world you ever want to with. Such harsh yelling, a stark contrast to what launched Meatloaf to international adoration, that operatic voice. Oh, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. No, no I won't do that. So... There was a time, Casey, where we would listen to music on things called boom boxes, these, you know, cassette players with big speakers. And I would have it on classic rock all summer long in my summer jobs. And I just remember, you know, several times a day they would play Paradise by the Dashboard Lights or Bat Out of Hell. And I would always love it. Uh, just the songs are just, frankly, terrific. They're iconic. I mean, what a life he had. I, even... You know, those uh, those of us around here who are a little too young to remember Meatloaf, I, I do remember him, but we've been working with some people who don't. They know the music. It's ubiquitous. It's been in our lives for so long. Um, I, our, our thoughts and, and, and prayers go out uh, to his family and everyone who's missing him, and that that's going to include uh, all of us here. I, I will say the only chance I ever got to see Meatloaf perform live was at a Mitt Romney campaign event, of all places. Uh, but I remember it really sticks out uh, in my mind as uh, something that, that, that was really, <laughs> really amazing uh, to witness. Um, I'm sure that's something you will never, ever <laughs> forget. I will not. Again, our thoughts with the family of Meatloaf this morning. Oh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, so good. So Rocky good. Rocky Horror Picture Show, I remember, you know, remember staying up all night in the 70s. You know, going go to those shows. I'm ex exaggerating <laughs> a little bit, but so good.